friends. Oh, this is going to be fun. I have a story for you. Story time. This is a fun one that came into the shop this week, but it's illustrative of things that you maybe should need to know as a ProMaster owner. So, I'm going to speak in technical jargon that will confuse you. Don't be ashamed. I'm confused by it too. And uh, I'm sure you could speak in jargon that would confuse me as well. But here's the story. So, a customer came in and they had a persistent code uh, P0016 and P0017, which come back as camshaft. It would be the rear bank exhaust and intake cam slow response. So we spent a good amount of time verifying that problem, meaning I measured the values coming off the cam sensor and we determined that yes, it is true, that cam is, is those two cams are, were running um, about 10 degrees out from where they should be. And the, the result of this, the drivability result, is low power because the cams can't advance to where they need to be and, and uh, it was struggling. It was low power and rough running, a couple other symptoms you would have. They actually, this is important to know, they thought it was a transmission because there are many conditions where when your engine is screwy, you'll feel it or perceive it or blame it on the transmission. And that's not your fault, it's just the way the world works. So for instance, if you have an engine that's missing, you might feel like your transmission is slipping, that sort of thing. If your engine is putting out low power, the computer may downshift to try and keep the speed up because it wants to keep you at the speed your foot is telling it you want to go. Um, eh, sometimes a bell rings. Okay, so here's where it gets exciting. And it gets very exciting for me because I enjoy this kind of stuff. So the way, uh, the way forward for this uh, poor customer is that you either need, they either need, a timing chain which may have stretched or um, the guide that tensions the timing chain is not working and that's allowing the chain to be slack and that's allowing the cam to be in the wrong place or it would be on the other side of the cam meaning that the cam phaser which is the device that controls its timing and the solenoid that controls the phaser are not working correctly but what's weird is uh, Panastar engines don't really suffer from this problem very much and they also, it would be very strange if both of those cams went bad all at once. So you would suspect that the chain has stretched or skipped a tooth or the tensioner is bad and it's affecting the timing. That's what you would suspect. One of the things you would do to address those two codes, if you were to look those two codes up, the first thing it mentions is about oil and oil quality because the cam timing is controlled by oil, oil and oil pressure. And if you were to put the wrong oil in or if you were to, um, or if there was some other oiling problem, uh, you that's how that's where it might show up. And also, the engine has the computer has built into it a, 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 a procedure for cleaning those cam phasers. I assume what it I don't exactly know how the cleaning process works. I assume it slides it through its entire range. It controls it to be where it should be. It measures that range and it does that a few times to try and remove debris that might be in the oiling path and thus affecting the cam timing. So we of course did those cam cleaning routines four or five times, no effect. And then I suggested that they, well, let's try changing the oil and see. Um, the history would be that 1500 miles prior it had been to a quickie oil change place, um, whose name I, I may or may not mention, and, uh, uh, and so on. Here's where it gets fun. About an hour after they left, I looked at the extractor that we used to collect the old oil and I and I noticed something about it and I go over and I look at it closely. I remember I had emptied it before we did this and after we did this there were three gallons of oil in the extractor. Now three gallons is a lot of oil. Where did that come from? Well obviously it all came from this engine. Why three gallons? Because three gallons is basically twice the capacity of the engine. The engine holds about five and a half liters. Um, and four liters to a gallon, you do the math, so approximately three gallons would show up like that. And then I start putting the puzzle back together. <laughs> you want to see van porn? I got the van porn. See that stuff in this filter that I've smashed and cut open? Tiny little bits of metal, but that's, or that's reflection. Don't worry about that. This is what's important. See this? That is burnt di dino oil, what used to be called coking. Well, we call coking in a turbocharger. What that is is the residue of non-synthetic oil. Well, oil that can't tolerate high enough temperatures. It breaks down. 
It breaks down. It, it does what, what bacon does in your frying pan. It turns into charred deliciousness. Here's what's also very important. This has not been touched since we did this job. <sighs> okay, this is our extractor, our cheesy Harbor Freight extractor, and that line where my finger's pointing is where we started, and this line is where we ended. There are three gallons of oil, if you look at the graduated cylinder in there. Three gallons, what's that sound like? That sounds like double the 5.5 quart capacity, or 5.5 liters, of the crankcase um, when you normally change the oil. The reason we know it's dyno, and the reason we know we're, we're not surprised by that amount of oil is because this went to a Jiffy Lube, and clearly what the pimply-faced teenager at Jiffy Lube did was not take the old oil out and put fresh oil in on top of it. So he's got double the correct capacity. He's got three gallons and change in the crankcase. So what does that do? Well, it, it does. Let's ask the man on the street. What happens if you put double the amount of oil in your crankcase? Can you be more it specific? Foam. It turns it into foam. The oil pump can't pump foam. It starves the upper end why does of it, oil. Why does it, it does, turn it into foam? Uh, because it will hit the crank. The crank is whipping yes. in the top surface of the oil. It will actually hit the bottom of the crank and the journals on the crank will go through the oil yep. and froth it and then it will turn the whole thing into foam and try to pump that foam and it, it will do terrible, terrible damage to your engine. Right. This is why you don't overfill a crank. More is not always better. Except with omelets, this works with omelets. Works beautifully with omelets. And so, in an effort to know, because it is fun to know, and it's fun to know the cause and the effect and everything there is to know, what I figure happened is, as I mentioned in that video, the pimply-faced teenager at the cookie oil change place did not drain the crankcase, but added another five and a half or six liters or quarts of oil on top of it, Overfill the crankcase, the crank, the crank whips up the oil, it tries to pump foam, and that lack of oil pressure is what damaged the cam phasers, most likely. What's interesting and exciting, and that is the conclusion of this story, aside just from the sleuthiness of it, is that um, uh, quickie oil change places have a mechanism to deal with customers' vehicles that they break. They do it all the time. They damage things and they blow up people's engines and so forth. They, um, so... That customer probably has an action that they can take against that place, and they'll probably pay for the repair. The repair, in this case, may be as little as fifteen hundred bucks. It may be as little as thirty-five hundred bucks, depending on how much damage there was. Also, not mentioned is I looked up the um, in the factory service literature about how the oil flows, and indeed, the path that the oil takes from the oil pump is different for both banks, and it explains why one bank would be oil starved and the other one wouldn't, because the other bank was working fine. Um, so, in a sense, it has a happy ending, this story, because the customer is going to get satisfaction. They're going to get their problem fixed or their money back or otherwise not be, you know, out thousands of dollars. And the mystery is solved. And the knowledge that you should be taking away is there's, it's okay to use instant oil change places. Everybody does it. But just keep your eye on those little, those salty little freaks. You never know what craziness they'll do. Also, they were using... What we're pretty certain is, I call it dino oil, meaning dinosaur, meaning mineral oil, min, you know, mineral-based actual oil that comes out of the ground and is then refined. The stuff that we prefer and the stuff that mo almost every place will use is a synthetic, which is made from natural gas and dino oils and such, such and such. But, and I don't want to go into a whole discourse about oil and why synthetic is better, but it am better. Okay, well, we've learned a lot. I have learned a lot. I was actually got very heartfelt and excited about that story because this apparently is what I live for, little automotive puzzles that can be solved and known and filling in the gaps in our knowledge. Pro Masters only. Fabulous, beautiful, sundry, sultry Barberton, Ohio. You can see all the details in the thing. If you need something about Pro Masters, you call me, you crazy little freaks, you.